Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 24, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we'll start out uh, with a blog post by Dom, also known as Seropone, who is writing about the dangers of custom URI schemes. Now, for the most part, when we're talking about uh, URIs, uh, we're talking about URIs that start with HTTP colon, maybe FTP colon, but the software can define its own URI schemes and register them, which means if you are clicking on a link that starts uh, with that custom URI scheme, this software may be executed. Now you typically do get a warning, but you often expect this to happen. Slack is a big example where this has caused problems in the past and the problems uh, usually arise from the parameters being passed from the URI to the software. Now, Dom uses as an example here the electronics art origin client. It also defines an origin colon as well as origin to colon URI scheme. And on Windows, well, if you click on a link like this, it will trigger the launching of origin and then parameters are passed to it. Now, initially you may think, hey, I can just do now uh, arbitrary command execution by sort of doing essentially a shell injection it's not quite that easy. You cannot sort of inject your own commands, but you can manipulate any command line parameters being passed to the software and that in turn may then execute commands. Another issue that the attacker has to overcome here is encoding the browser may enforce, but the DOM here shows at the example of origin how this vulnerability can pretty easily be exploited. As far as I can tell from the blog post, this particular vulnerability has not yet been reported to Electronics Arts and has not been patched as a result. So be careful in particular if you are using Origin, but there is plenty of other software that's susceptible to similar vulnerabilities. Now, lately we have talked a lot about um, groups like Magecart that did inject JavaScript into checkout pages in order to steal credit card numbers. Today we got an update about the other kind of skimming, physical skimmers that are being installed in various credit card readers, but also in ATMs. Advanced Intelligence has a blog post summarizing some of their recent findings. Now, uh, they sort of looked at a couple of the marketplaces where these skimmers are being sold. Actually, uh, not cheap. Some of the better ones are are going for about $1,500. For example, something better card readers started doing is jittering, which means that the card is essentially jiggled around as it's being read in. And as a result, it's more difficult for any add-on skimmers to correctly read the card. But these better skimmers are taking care of this and are still able to read most cards. Also, some ATMs, for example, use electromagnetic interference to disrupt card readers. Uh, but again, if you have the right skimmer, it will be able to defeat some of these techniques. And some skimmers even include a camera in order to record the victim's PIN number. But in the end, it comes down to how can you protect yourself? In my opinion, credit card skimming, not a huge risk to the consumer. On the other hand, where the consumer usually experiences the highest losses and inconvenience is ATM card skimming. I would certainly refrain from using any ATM machines that are not attached to a bank and if possible, then ATM machines and banks that you are used to, where you're familiar with the particular machine. 
And Apple released a supplemental update for macOS Mojave 10.14.5. This update only applies to the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the T2 security chip. It does fix an unspecified problem with this security chip, but at this point, Apple has not released any details as to what this problem is all about. And talking about Apple, if you're looking for something to play with this weekend, looks like Microsoft released their Advanced Threat Protection or Microsoft Defender ATP for OS X. Now, this is just the client or agent part that monitors the system. In order to collect all the alerts, you will still need Windows Security Center, which uh, I believe only runs on Windows. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Now on Monday, there's a holiday in the US and I believe also in the UK. So no podcast for Monday. We'll continue again on Tuesday. Next week, uh, by the way, I'll be in San Antonio. So if you happen to be there, stop by, say hi. And I'll be teaching the intrusion detection in depth SEC 503 class. Thanks and talk to you again on Tuesday. Bye.